Thank you, Brian, and thank you, um, Robbie, for the invitation. Um, so I'm going to change um, locale a little bit. I'm going to describe a project that we um, have that's based in India. Um, it's looking at maternal health care and early infant care <clears throat> and the, the role of uh, persuasive technology, mobile technology, in fact, uh, in trying to um, improve health outcomes. So um, two of the biggest fundamental uh, indicators of, of health and eco economic health are uh, maternal and infant mortality rates, and um, they're extremely high in developing countries, and in fact, um, disproportionately high in, in India. Um, and in two of the Millennium Goals, two out of the eight goals, relate to infant and child mortality rates and reducing those dramatically over the next decade. Um, <clears throat> and this is a visualization of the distribution of uh, those um, maternal mortalities across the world. And you can see in the developing regions, they're extraordinarily high. So is there something we can do about this with technology? Um, and our thesis is that, in fact, you can, and especially so in India, because there is an existing <clears throat> uh, human and medical infrastructure in place that's somehow not uh, as e effective as it could be. So we'd like to explore uh, what kinds of appropriate technology can be uh, brought into this environment and in such a way as to improve outcomes. So interestingly, India already has a, a, a vast community health worker system. Uh, the, their target, I'm not sure what the official figure is, but their target is uh, one worker per village. That would be about a million health workers. They're not skilled um, health givers. Most of them are illiterate. In fact, uh, they're usually described as health uh, advocates. Um, or um, auxiliary health workers. Uh, and this system is actually involved over sev several generations. Um, however, they play critical roles in uh, certain aspects of maternal care, especially in persuading the mother to have a clinic delivery versus delivering in the village, and also in maternal uh, vitamins and nutrition for the child. So these simple interventions are enormously effective, but in general, they're under underutilized. So uh, my student, Dibby, has been doing a lot of field work. There's a lot of statistics that hint at what's going wrong with the system. Um, but in order to really understand the problem, because the problem is sort of a, it's not even a last mile problem. It's a last six feet problem between the health worker and the women. Uh, and so in order to understand it, it involves uh, field work. And Dibby has done a lot of work. Um, so, uh, several different major sites, um, four different cities and about 30 different organizations over the last year. And it's given us enough information to try to make sense of some of the statistics. Um, so here's another summary slide describing the health worker system, which I won't get into because of time. <clears throat> but anyway, there is a vast system, but still um, uh, outcomes are remarkably poor. India hovers near the bottom. Uh, uh, in health outcomes, and in fact contributes a large fraction of the mortalities worldwide. So some factors that, that do stand out. There's poor training, uh, absenteeism, a lack of performance of, uh, by health workers, but also they're being undercut by breakdowns in supply chain, and to a large extent, a lack of participation, lack of uh, acceptance by the women themselves. Um, and this, the government system is the largest system, but there are some major uh, NGO systems. UNICEF has a vast system as well, and many, many smaller systems, all of which are trying to sort of backfill the, the government system, which is not working very well. So some quick examples of things that could be improved. The, the best predictor, I mentioned earlier that uh, clinic delivery has enormously higher, uh, lower, lower risk and higher um, success rates than delivering in the village. Um, but surprisingly, fewer than 50% of deliveries are actually in a clinic. And it doesn't appear to be primarily due to the lack of access to clinics. The clinic system isn't perfect, but there are a huge number of clinics, and they are accessible to most village women. The reality on the ground, though, is things like uh, traditional practices, the fact that women are used to giving birth in the village. Um, the workers often actually lack credibility. They're, they are actually village women, or worse, uh, women from a nearby village. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, the, 
in this culture, typically the woman herself is not the primary, often not the primary decision maker about uh, how to have the child and how to take care of it. The, uh, the dominant, it usually is a woman's decision, but the authoritative woman is usually the mother-in-law or uh, some other family matriarch. <clears throat> uh, another example is maternal vitamins, which can contribute enormously to Im improved outcomes. Um, but there's a domino effect. There's, there are supply problems with some of the workers, and these actually undermine the workers' effectiveness as a can persuasive influence for other health outcomes. Uh, so, yeah. So to summarize, um, you know, it's it's not just a problem of providing the resources. It's really a persuasion problem in uh, convincing women to adopt them. And in fact, there's a problem also in convincing the health workers to accept the practices they're being trained for because they too have problems in acceptance and performance. So I'll skip over some of these details. What, so what we're trying to do is, is address some of these uh, needs using persuasive technologies. Um, and in terms of training, generally uh, book learning, uh, text-based learning is not practical because of the literacy levels of the health workers. And so instead they rely on more interactive media like stories and um, role-playing exercises, etc. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, you know we're, we're looking at India, which is an interesting uh, example in which clearly persuasion is sort of the obstacle to a better health care. So it's going to be a different environment from, from the US, but we think we can learn a lot. If we can succeed in this environment, it's very likely that we can improve um, some health outcomes in the West as well for uh, problems like chronic disease management, um, uh, teenage health risks, pregnancy drugs, etc., where essentially the, the, um, the patient themselves has to make a decision and they have to pers be persuaded to adopt uh, better health practices. Um, <clears throat> generally in the West, people are, are somewhat rational about their choices. In, in our environment, people are much more driven by tradition and there isn't a notion that there's an absolute authority that health workers have or that doctors have or that the government has. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, so the two things we're focusing on now are uh, developing appropriate, uh, uh, using appropriate technology to develop better training practices and to integrate persuasive mechanisms into the materials that are given to health workers that they then present to village women. For instance, to, to convince them of the value of um, clinic delivery. Um, now, India, of course, um, <clears throat> has enormous cell phone penetration, even in the villages. In fact, um, in an, another project that we have in India, we had 100% penetration of uh, cell phones and families uh, in a fairly remote um, village in the Mango region. Um, and it seems to be more than 50% of households now nationwide. So um, uh, our goal is to m use the affordances of the cell phone um, and hopefully do a better job of training and produce materials which are themselves more compelling than um, uh, the kind of face-to-face -face interaction that health workers rely on now. Okay, so um, how can cell phones be persuasive? Uh, I'll just give you a sketch of some work that we did over the last year um, that look at mechanisms by which they potentially can. Obviously one is that you can offer rewards, you can offer information and rhetoric these uh, media are generally are somewhat effective, but um, obviously offering re uh, gifts consumes a lot of resources, and uh, you know it's it's a re repeated use of resources. Where persuasion we see more as a, a continuing process that requires mechanisms that are um, being applied over and over. So one thing we looked at was sorry the um, uh, mechanisms by which. Uh, people persuade each other interactively and one approach to persuading a parent to acquiesce to someone's request is to just make the request in a um, in a packet like this and you can scan that and see what your own reaction would be. Um, another approach is to ask for gradual acquiescence um, and 
gradually allay the negative reactions that tend to build up if you deliver a request in one hit. Um, so in this delivery, what's happening is that um, the, the, instead of just being presented with a, a sort of an ultimatum, the, the correspondent is participating in a dialogue that's leading to a conclusion. And that process tends to make them more likely to accept. So um, in fact, the second one is more persuasive. And we did an experiment uh, to verify this with some human subjects at Berkeley. Uh, so it's, this is designed to exploit the fact that cell phones can be um, interactive. They're naturally interactive. They're naturally voice-based. And there's potential there to deliver messages more effectively by making it a, a, a dialogic presentation. So we directly compared this um, a, a system which a, did a persuasive task, a standard persuasive task uh, from, a, from the literature. And we used a, a sort of a, a message system which was providing exactly the same information in this dense paragraph form versus the dialogic form. And um, two things happened. One of them is that, um, well, the hypotheses were that the, this dialogic form would be more persuasive. Secondly, that uh, participants um, using a dialogic system would actually need less information to be convinced, because they're convinced at some point after which time they commit and they stop uh, listening to the message. And so, in fact, both of those were true. Uh, not only did, were people more persuaded by a dialogic presentation, but they actually only listened to about half of the lines uh, before making a decision. So um, it's just a start, but it's uh, a suggestion of one mechanism that we can use to make health information, even basic health information, more effective through this vehicle. Uh, I'll quickly go through some, uh, well, the high level thing we're trying to do is build sort of interactive stories that uh, embody this principle and some other principles. So there are actually uh, five other principles that are known to be at play in persuasive processes. And the interactive stories allow us to nicely link all of those mechanisms into a, uh, a medium that can hopefully have a strong effect on, on um, the target's behavior. So, um, <clears throat> but what still remains to be decided, what we like to, would like to do more systematically is try to figure out which, specifically which of these mechanisms um, are most effective in our target environment. And from there, you know, refine the design so that we get best, the best possible outcomes. Um, and it'll, it's using a lot of user-centered methods. Um, and let's see. So just to summarize, <clears throat> um, in India, we have a maternal and infant mortality problem that probably is uh, preventable or significant, could be significantly reduced because it's largely due to a failure in the last few feet of interaction between a community health workers and the village women. Um, and cell phones, which are already a f familiar technology in that environment, uh, do have certain affordances which uh, can enhance persuasion. And uh, our next phase is actually developing some materials. Uh, we have very good ties now with uh, some of the NGOs that actually produce materials. And so we're uh, now exploring you know, these uh, interactive and other persuasive mechanisms to produce materials that are most effective. And then we're going to field test them next year. So uh, yeah, with that, I'll close and um, invite questions in the uh, panel session.